Good morning and a very warm welcome to you on this Easter day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day that the Lord has made. A day to celebrate. Let us rejoice and be glad. Christ is risen and glorified in our midst. He calls us to share in his new life. Gates and doors were barred and all the windows fastened down I spent the night in sleeplessness and rose at every sound Half in hopeless sorrow and half in fear the day Would find the soldiers breaking through to drag us all away And just before the sunrise I heard something at the wall gates began to rattle and a voice began to call I hurried to the window and looked down into the street expecting swords and torches and the sounds of soldiers feet there was no one there but Mary so I went down to let her in John stood there beside me as she told us where she'd been she said they've moved him in the night and none of us know where The stone's been rolled away and now his body isn't there We both ran toward the garden, then John ran on ahead We found the stone and the empty tomb just the way that Mary said But the winding sheet they wrapped him in was just an empty shell and how or where they'd taken him was more than I could tell. Oh, something strange had happened there, but just what I didn't know. John believed a miracle, but I just turned to go. Circumstance and speculation couldn't lift me very high. Cause I'd seen them crucify him, then I saw him. Back inside the house again, the guilt and anguish came. Everything I promised him just added to my shame. When at last it came to choices, I denied I knew his name. Even if he was alive, it wouldn't be the same. But suddenly the air was filled with a strange and sweet perfume Light that came from everywhere drove shadows from the room And Jesus stood before me with his arms held open wide And I fell down on my knees and clung to him and cried Then he raised me to my feet and as I looked into his eyes Love was shining out from him like sunlight from the skies Guilt and my confusion disappeared in sweet release And every fear I'd ever had just melted into So let us make our prayer of confession. Because Jesus has risen to life, sin has lost its power to keep us away from God. So let us tell God we are sorry for our sins, in certainty that he will forgive us 
and welcome us as his friends. Because Jesus has risen, forgive, forgive us, us, Lord, Lord we, we pray. pray. Let us in our hearts confess the wrong things we have done. Because Jesus has risen, forgive, forgive us, us, Lord, Lord we, we pray. pray. Let us in our hearts confess the wrong things we have said. Because Jesus has risen, forgive, forgive us, us, Lord, Lord we, we pray. pray. Let us in our hearts confess the wrong things we have thought. Because Jesus has risen, forgive, forgive us, us, Lord, Lord we, we pray. pray. May Almighty God forgive us and bring us to new life in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Amen. Our New Testament reading is from Acts, chapter 10. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. 
we are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, and when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, Suddenly, two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning to the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what he had ha- of what had happened. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. A story is told of a young doctor who found herself on the last train out of Poland during Hitler's regime. She had her firstborn toddler and her newborn baby with her. The bombing was fierce and the train had to stop many times for the passengers to take cover. Consequently, a trip that should have taken a few hours took a few days. The food ran out and there was no water, and when they arrived at their destination, the baby was starving and ill. Thankfully, a group of nuns met her there and took the baby to their hospital, where they would nurse it back to health. The mother felt a great sense of relief. But the joy was short-lived. The next morning, she was given the news that the hospital had been bombed during the night and that no one had survived. The mother was given a flashlight to search for her baby's body. What a tragic scene. Imagine the confusion, the pain, the grief, the hopelessness of a mother who herself was a doctor, whose hands and skill had doubtless saved many lives, but could do nothing to save her own child. She had done her best to protect the baby from danger and death, and it seemed that all would be well but in the end there was nothing she could do to prevent her baby's death. The unexpected news of her child's death filled her with despair and inconsolable grief. The mother desperately searched through the rubble for her baby's body, her toddler in tow. She was crying loudly together with many others in the same situation. When all of a sudden there was another cry the sound of a baby. She ran to where the sound was coming from and there in the rubble she found her baby still alive. What incredible relief 
mingled with joy. Her baby was alive. In an instant, the tears of sadness and the feeling of helplessness disappeared and were replaced by indescribable joy and relief. The end of the story was not hopelessness, but immense joy. On the Friday that Jesus died, Joseph of Arimathea and the women took Jesus' body down from the cross and laid it in a tomb. A stone was rolled over the entrance and everyone went home. We read that there was huge sense of helplessness, hopelessness and sadness that we all feel when we lose someone we love. Jesus was dead and when a person is dead, that's it. There is nothing more to be said, just that terrible agony that we all have to carry about. But today we celebrate a different ending to the story. Today we celebrate with the same joy that that mother had when she found her baby alive and well, the baby she thought was dead. Early on Sunday morning, the women who came to the tomb were greeted by an angel who said, he is not here, he has been raised just as he said. We are told that they left the tomb filled with joy and ran to tell the disciples. The mother who discovered her baby alive in the rubble and ruins cried with incredible relief, mingled with joy. The disciples could hardly believe it when the women reported, he is alive, Jesus is alive. Easter is a celebration of Christ's victory over sin and the grave. The authorities thought that they were rid of Jesus once and for all, and that all the fuss over this so-called Son of God would be finished. They were looking forward to having all this behind them and that that would be the very last word they would hear of Jesus of Nazareth. Even the disciples were caught up in the gloom of death and thought that Jesus was done for and that they might as well go back to fishing or wherever else, they, whatever else they were doing before Jesus appeared on the scene. How wrong could they be? Things would never be the same again. Sickness and death will always be with us. We will grieve over those we leave. We will miss those whose journey on this earth has ended. But now Jesus has given us a whole new perspective. Paul puts it this way. The bodies we now have are weak and can die, but they will be changed into bodies that are eternal. Then the scriptures will come true. Death has lost the battle. Where is its victory? Where is its sting? When we are given life, we are given life when we are born. We are given a body which will deteriorate as we get older. One day our body will be laid to, let to rest when our journey on this earth comes to an end. For some people that is very gloomy and morbid, especially when it is believed that death is the end and that their loved one is gone forever. But Easter gives a whole new meaning to death. Just as Jesus rose from the dead, we are to trust that we also will rise to a new life beyond the grave. Because of Jesus' resurrection, we have eternal life. In Tanzania, when Christians sing Alleluia on Easter morning, they literally laugh at death. Alleluia, ha, 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 they shout. Alleluia, ha, ha, ha. That is the real message of Easter. We can sing with joyous laughter on the day of Christ's victory. St Paul laughs at death when he mockingly says, come on death, what have you got to brag about now? Come on death, what happened to your power to hurt us? You know what, death, you are nothing because God has given us mortals eternal life through Christ's victory over sin and death. I am the first to admit that I don't understand the resurrection of Jesus. The stories baffle my rational, logical brain. It comprehends only what can be explained. But the Easter story tells of a real Jesus, not a ghost. He has a body that can be touched, that bears the nail marks, that eats, talks, walks, and yet the body in which he now appears is so different and can appear and disappear 
and finally ascend up through the clouds. If ever there was a quantum leap of faith, this is it. I do not understand it, yet without it my life would be doomed. I would be left in hopelessness. But in spite of all things I do not understand about Easter, I know that it is real, a living truth. Nothing about Christianity makes sense without it. We cannot stop the process that will bring about our own death or do anything to stop those we love leaving us. We will stand in shock and grief, broken-hearted, speechless and helpless. There will be times of pain and grief. But thank God we are not left hopeless and helpless. That's because of an event that took place in one awesome moment in history some 2,000 years ago in a small cemetery outside the walls of Jerusalem. An angel said to those who were grieving, he is not here, he is risen. Alleluia, Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs> Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen.
so let us pray. In joy and hope, let us pray to the Father, saying, In Christ our Lord, that our risen Saviour may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Father, in Christ, Christ our, our Lord, Lord, that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter. Let us pray to the Father, in, in Christ, Christ our, our Lord, Lord, that God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray to the Father, in, in Christ, Christ our Lord, Lord, that he may provide for those who lack food, work or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord, in Christ, Christ our, our Lord, Lord, that by his power war and famine may cease through all the world. Let us pray to the Father, in, in Christ, Christ our, our Lord, Lord that he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak and the dying, to comfort and strengthen them. Let us pray to the Father, in, in Christ, Christ our Lord, Lord, that he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Father, in, in Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. We share in a moment as we bring our own personal prayers to God on this Easter day. And we commend our prayers as we say together, Our Father, Father which, which art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come Thy, thy will be done, be done in earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. And so we share Christ's peace on this Easter day. Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. And then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And we share Christ's peace with those in our household or those on our hearts at this time. And so we close our time of worship. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our, our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Amen. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you the gates of everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the, In the name, name of Christ. Of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.